Paul has told me that I need to talk slow and to smile. There's your smile. It's gone. How many of you are roller coaster people? Fly by the seat of your pants. Um, this was actually my second setup trip. Years ago, Paul and I went to Easter Island to do a setup trip. If you ever have the chance to go to Easter Island, it is an amazing place. When we arrived, we did not have a place to stay. We did not have a contact. We were flying by the seat of our pants. Now, it's okay to fly by the seat of your pants when you're doing a setup trip and it's just you. It's not okay to fly by the seat of your pants when you have 30 teenagers with you. It's a little impossible. Well, we arrived at the airport. Um, we landed and they had a bunch of kiosks out there. We got a nice room with breakfast, rented a car, but we had no contacts. So we heard there was a Christian bookstore in town. We went to the Christian bookstore. Nobody speaks English. They speak Spanish, I think. Paul and I know two words of Spanish, hola and gracias. That's it. Um, there just so happened to be someone who spoke English in the bookstore, probably the only person in town, who just so happened to know the Wycliffe missionary. And we got in touch with him, set up a team that never went, but it was an amazing, amazing time. This time we went to Puerto Rico to set up a hurricane relief trip. Um, and again, no Spanish. We arrived, we waited over two hours for a rental car that had been previously booked. Um, I think they had cars coming from a slow boat in the US to get there because there were none, absolutely none, at the airport. And there were a lot of people there. But it gave us the opportunity to share with the people that were around us what we were doing and um, made it a little bit more exciting. There were no seats and the only place to sit was the floor. And those who know me know that if I sit on the floor, I will never get up. So for two hours I walked while Paul was trying to get the um, um, car. We went to our hotel, uh, beautiful pictures on the internet, very cheap one, beautiful pictures on the internet. We to this day do not know where they got those pictures because it did not match where we stayed. However, it was TMI style. It had a nice, the bed was comfortable. Um, the shower sometimes worked. The toilet never stopped working. Um, and it came with breakfast. So we, we got in late because of the um, car. We went out and got something to eat and then came back and went to bed and got up after watching Survivor, of course. Got up the next morning and um, went down for breakfast. And breakfast consisted of toast, a mushy apple, a tiny sugar donut, and juice. OK, we can handle that. So we get in the rental car and we start our, our trip out of the city. Um, when you see um, San Juan, it doesn't, you, you see the blue tarps when you're flying in, but you see blue tarps here. Um, I didn't see a lot of damage in San Juan itself. Now, a lot of the streets don't have street signs, but I don't think they've ever had street signs. And everything is in Spanish as far as the signs, so we wouldn't know what they said anyway. Um, so we went up on the mountains. Now, the mountains, you need to understand, are single lane roads with two lanes of traffic and a lot of switchbacks and stuff. So um, that was a lot of fun. I, I enjoy adventures like that, especially if I'm not driving. So um, we went to a town. We were looking for a CMA church in the town of Maracayo, I think. I know I'm slaughtering the name. Um, so we went and the, we had my iPhone and we were doing the Google Maps, you know. Now, how many of you know who Shamar Moore is? The guy that was on Criminal Minds? Why they can't put him on Google Maps where he says, baby girl, where can I show, can I show you where to go? You know, that type of a thing. But they put this lady with a flat voice who gives you the directions and most of the time she's telling me to reroute or turn around or do something. But she's telling us to turn on streets, that we don't have street signs to turn on. And then it, you could tell she was getting mad. And, <laughs> and she would send us, tell us to go down one-way streets the wrong way. So, um, and then you get her in the mountains. And she was sending us in circles in this town, literally circles. I mean, we, there were two horses outside the high school. And we passed those at least 10 times. 
So we finally decided to stop for lunch. We had some fried chicken, and I said, okay, what's the game plan? You know, we had no idea where we were going. Paul said, I think I'll go to the police station. So he went in the police station, came back out. They just happened to speak English in that police station, and they sent us up the hill to this Pentecostal church. Um, and uh, uh, who th they were finishing lunch, they were packing up stuff, who just happened to have about six pastors there and just happened to be having a meeting with FEMA workers who spoke English and who could translate. So the, even the FEMA workers were excited about what we wanted to do. And they were, we had been told that FEMA wants nothing to do with churches, but that's not what we saw there. So we got, uh, they were translating between a couple of pastors with us, and we were able to set up um, a couple of really neat projects. The team will be two weeks in one area, working with the church, doing some uh, hurricane relief, and then they'll go into another remote area and do the same thing. Um, so we got that all set up. We went back down the mountain, one lane road, um, back to our place, and got there that evening. Um, the next day, we had breakfast, and it was the exact same thing, except everything was a day older, and the apple was mushier. But I'm not going to complain, because it was food. And we decided we were going to go to, what's the name of the town, Kurt? Adjunct, whatever. OK. <laughs> we were going there, because Kurt Bitterman was there at a camp. And so we decided we would go there. So we, it's again about a three hour trip. The roads seem to be better, but the devastation seemed to be greater. Uh, we would see strip trees, we would see down trees, down bamboo, uh, some down power lines. Um, all the power lines looked new that were up. Um, as we got closer to the town, we saw that some of the power lines weren't hooked up yet, but the town itself did have power. Um, again, we don't, we have the name of the town, uh, the camp, but we don't have an address. Thank you, Kurt, for not giving us an address in your email. So we stopped at a park because we saw a policeman and we said, policeman English. And he was with a young lady and a young man, probably in their late 20s. And um, I, I rolled down my window and I said, um, do you speak English? No. Great. Even the policeman didn't speak English. So the, they came over to the window, and I had the name of the camp on my um, notebook. She picks up her phone and makes a phone call. And I'm like, what? She just happened to know the lady whose husband runs the camp and just happened to have her phone number in her phone. And the lady of the camp just happened to speak English and gave us directions to get there. So we got up there, and I've never seen Kurt speechless. He's up on a ladder without his hard hat, <laughs> uh, working on wires, <laughs> working on wires, and looks down and sees us, and just the look of astonishment that we were there. So we had lunch with them, talked to the, um, the camp director, and uh, that will be a great team in the future for us. Um, as we, uh, there was, going up to the camp, they really didn't have electricity once you left that town itself. Uh, but they were, the, you saw a lot of truck uh, trucks there, you saw a lot of workers there trying to get that, um, that um, the electricity back up. Um, sovereignty. Now, I am a Presbyterian, the Frozen Chosen. Uh, and we are very big on God's sovereignty. And sovereignty can de be defined as having supreme authority, control, and power over all that has happened, is happening, and will happen in the future in all times across all history. And the sovereignty of God sets me free because I know he's in control. In Proverbs 16:9, it says, the heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord directs, establishes his steps. Now, I say, just happen. These miracles just happen. I, we're going away from the first place, and I'm thinking in my head, did God just do that? We're going away from the town where we had, you know, the lady had the phone number, and I'm like, did God just do that? There's no just happened with God, because his, he establishes all of our steps. And there's another smile. I'm done. Yeah.